our uh, next speaker is Professor uh, Johannes Urpelainen. Uh, he is an assistant professor of political science at Columbia University. Uh, he focus, uh, his research focuses on international cooperation and institutions, especially in the field of global environmental governance. Uh, he has published numerous uh, papers in academic journals and currently publishing a book, uh, Cutting the Gordian Knot of Economic Reform, When and How International Institutions Help. And the floor is yours, Professor. So um, I was given the instruction to talk about the two-way relationship between uh, peace and sustainable development. And I think of those uh, two ways, I think one of them is quite easy to understand. This is the... Uh, uh, idea that uh, peace is a precondition for sustainable development. Without peace, it's very hard to imagine any kind of a meaningful development, so I'm not going to spend too much time uh, addressing that issue. I consider it uh, fairly obvious that um, we need to have peace for any kind of meaningful development in different societies. But the other way uh, direction is, uh, is is a little more complicated, and this is the, the question of to what extent is uh, sustainable development a, a necessary condition for uh, peace. And uh, on, on some level, obviously, we can think of if we define, uh, define sustainability broadly enough, uh, then again, this becomes an obvious issue. So if we say that violence is part of a uh, lack of sustainability, then uh, the, the link between these two issues is, is obvious. But if we start to think of uh, sustainability uh, in a sort of more uh, narrow sense, uh, thinking of things like the uh, adequacy of uh, resources, uh, the protection of the environment, the protection of uh, both the global and, and, and local uh, environmental resources, then the re uh, relationship becomes a little less obvious. And in fact, until the past, let's say, five to ten years or so, there was basically no evidence at all uh, that there is a relationship. The most common hypothesis in the studies was that uh, environmental uh, degradation contributes to violence, but uh, surprisingly few studies had found any direct evidence that this is the case. So there were some examples uh, of wars that seemed to be driven by uh, environmental degradation, but all of those were contested and there were always multiple other structural factors uh, in place. So it was very hard to say uh, what was going on. But recently there's been this uh, new literature that's tried to find new ways to look at the link between climate change and conflict, and uh, the evidence there is fairly clear, and, and that is that climate change is a big contributor uh, to civil wars uh, in the recent years. So if you look at the start of civil wars uh, in the past, let's say, 30 to 40 years, when there's a lot of evidence for uh, higher temperatures, you see that they tend to start in uh, years when uh, the temperature is high. And this happens in countries that react to those temperatures uh, the most str strongly. So if you think of an El Nino year, when the temperatures go up in Africa, that's when the wars start. If you think of a La Nina uh, year in Africa, there are very few wars that start at that time. So the link between the way we use energy here and what happens in Africa in terms of violence and killing has become a lot stronger in the past five to 10 years. And my first uh, kind of policy implication here would be that I think this connection needs to be made clear, that we cannot uh, prevent violence by simply looking at once there already is a conflict. We need to take into account the global aspect, that what we do here is uh, directly related to how many wars there are that the international community needs to deal with in the future. And so that's why I think sustainable development goals should uh, take into account uh, the uh, importance of uh, protecting the environment, not just for uh, its own sake, but also to contribute to peace. On the other hand, uh, there is also increasingly a realization that uh, while there are many things we can do to uh, control climate change and reduce our resource uh, consumption, it's w very unlikely that we could completely stop this and go back to uh, what used to be 200, 300 years ago. Uh, even the most optimistic scenarios uh, now uh, predict at least a, an increase in global temperature of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. So we are going to have to uh, prepare ourselves for a very different world in the coming 100 years. And this means, going back actually to the previous presentation, that the uh, importance of finding new ways to deal with sort of local environmental stress uh, becomes very important. So whenever climate change or other environmental stress uh, creates difficulties in different areas, uh, these become localized effects. So we cannot say on, on a global scale what is the best way to prepare uh, for, uh, let's say, environmental conflict in different areas. This is always going to be uh, specific to different areas. So I think there's a clear need to take this kind of bottom-up 
localized uh, preparation uh, into account. And this brings me to my final point, which is that based on what we've seen so far, uh, it seems that the best way to prepare for environmental degradation is to become wealthy. So, so there is the, the realization that if you are a very poor country, there is not a lot you can do to prepare yourself. If you are a middle income or a wealthy country, there's a lot of things you can do to deal with things like floods, drought, and so on. So this brings us to this kind of complicated issue where uh, growing wealth is good for many reasons, reducing poverty. It's also good for preparing for environmental change. But at the same time, as different countries grow wealthy, they also contribute to that environmental change. So that's why I think things like green growth, decarbonization, are becoming increasingly important issues uh, also in the global south. So countries like India, uh, I think there's a clear need to find ways to grow wealthy with, uh, with less environmental stress. And I think we as a global community su should support those efforts because ultimately what happens in India will then influence what happens in Africa, which will influence what happens here, and so on. So we are, I guess we are all in this together, and we need to find ways to deal with both the issues in the north and the issues in the south and uh, see the connections between those two. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you for uh, explaining and uh, discussing this link between the uh, climate change and the conflict. Uh, uh, one of the pillars of the sustainable development is the uh, environmental dimension. And uh, I think uh, there, are, there is a, uh, now in these days, there, are, there is a clear uh, connection between uh, climate change, uh, environment, mm -hmm. and how it affects the peace and uh, conflicts in certain areas. And it uh, certainly needs to be considered in the uh, discussions uh, of the SDGs. Uh, 